Prager U. U apparently stands for urine, urine and feces. feces. Yes, urine and feces. Because it's not a university. And Dennis is not a human. For us lefties, Prager U serves a very important purpose. Appearance in their videos is a reliable imbecile marker, which helps us safely disregard the opinion of many, many people. It is also great material for YouTube poops. It is my intent that by the time you leave this school, you will be among the few your age to distinguish between the urine and feces. So let's pay a visit to that mental asylum of a channel. One of their recent videos is called How the Left Sees the World, Power, Race and Class. You probably won't believe this, because it's bullshit, but I love it when people explain my own thoughts to me. Pinch your nose. Why does the left hate Israel? I don't know. Why can't you stop beating your wife? I swear to God, there must be a better way to start a video than with a loaded question. On the surface, it doesn't make sense. Of course it doesn't make sense, because the left doesn't hate Israel. I am a leftist and I don't hate it. Actually, I kind of like Israel. I have a subscriber from there and he's a great supportive guy. In fact, only people who hate Israel, hate Israel. Israel is a liberal democracy. It extends full rights to women, to gays, and to its many Arab citizens. Except it doesn't extend full rights to gays, you fucking liar. Same-sex marriage is not legal in Israel. As to the Arabs, while they do have sameish rights on paper, they are treated similar to black people in America, which is hardly ideal. Like all countries which are made up of flawed human beings, Israel is flawed. But compared to most countries, not to mention its neighbors, it is a civil rights paradise. That's called a whataboutism. When we are evaluating Israel, other countries are irrelevant. Compared to cyanide, human shit is not so bad. But it doesn't mean I'm gonna start eating shit. So why does the left hate Israel? We don't hate Israel. But many of us, including me, condemn the Israeli government's foreign policy, especially their treatment of Palestinians. Trust me, they deserve to be criticized. Or don't trust me and go read some shit, I'll post the links down below. Now let's hear the Prager's version. The reason is that the left, and as I always emphasize, I am talking about the left, not about liberals, is not guided by a moral compass. It is guided by three other compasses. A power compass, a race compass, and a class compass. Cool story, Penis Drager, but I am guided by my moral compass, which I have mentioned many times in my other videos. I was polishing my moral compass based on my well-being oriented moral system. In my moral system, moral systems. Therefore, since I am part of the left, you are wrong, Denise. Let's begin with the power compass. Instead of evaluating people and nations on the basis of right and wrong or good and evil, the left evaluates them on the basis of weak and strong. If you're weak, you're good. If you're strong, you're bad. Israel is strong, therefore it is bad. America is strong, therefore it is bad. The Palestinians are regarded as weak, therefore they're good. Look, this bullshit is so absurd, I seriously doubt even one leftist thinks that way. One. Yet, the old fuck talks so confidently as if he personally got confirmation from every leftist. Like I said, he's just not human. He's a living turd. When you're guided by a moral compass, you don't ask who's strong and who's weak. You ask who's morally right and who's morally wrong. Oh really, Penis? Then maybe you and your grifter friends should do that sometimes. Fifty years ago, Israel was not a big issue for the left. Why? Because it was perceived as weak. But after the 1967 Six-Day War, in which Israel achieved a stunning military victory, it all changed. Israel became strong, so Israel became bad. And the Palestinians were weak, so they became good. Once again, Israel isn't bad just because it's supposedly strong. And funnily enough, Palestinians didn't become good either. They are neutral to me. A truly good nation is too high of a bar in my book. 
So no matter how much terror Palestinians engaged in, hijacking airplanes, murdering 11 Israeli athletes and coaches at the 1972 Munich Olympics, blowing up Israelis in pizza parlors and at weddings, the left's position never changed. Palestinians good, Israel bad, because the Palestinians were weak and Israel was strong. No, as a lefty, I condemn terrorism. Why harm innocent people when you can do much more with a couple of pinpoint assassinations? In RimWorld. Has Ben Netanyahu considered gaming? That's one of the three ways the left judges the world. You can test this theory in other ways. Why is the United States bad? Because it's strong. And third world countries that oppose the United States are good. The United States is bad not because it's strong. Strength in itself is meaningless. What matters is how you use it. America uses its strength to constantly fight illegal offensive wars all around the globe, prop up dictators, and fuck over its own citizens. This is why it's bad, dipshit. As to the third world countries, whether they are good or not, depends on the country. Cuba, for example, has been adored by the left for decades. Never mind that Cuba's Communist Party has ruined Cuba, that Cubans have no civil rights, and Cuba is one of the poorest countries in the world. Since Cuba is weak, to the left, Cuba is good. Cuba does have severe problems with human rights, and the government is pretty shit. But let's not forget 60 years of American embargo, alright? I've heard when 95% of your exports get cut, it doesn't really help your economy. The same was true with North Vietnam in the 1960s. It was considered weak, so it was good. The US was strong, so it was bad. It didn't matter that America was trying to preserve the freedom of the South Vietnamese exactly as it had preserved the freedom of the South Koreans. The US was strong, so it was bad. In North Vietnam, there was a nationalist anti-colonial movement trying to drive out the French and their puppet emperor and achieve independence. Unfortunately, since the movement was led by a Marxist-Leninist and commies are obviously evil, the US decided to support the unpopular southern forces. They ended up fighting 19 years of war, which even the American citizens hated, and had to eventually pull out, achieving nothing but massive casualties on both sides, war crimes and destruction. After the invaders left, even with all the damage sustained, resolute Vietnamese still reclaimed their land and established the Socialist Republic of Vietnam. As for the Korean wars, yes, Americans and the United Nations did repel the North Korean invasion. But once again, they did it mainly because communism bad. And they also couldn't stop themselves from slaughtering thousands of South Korean civilians. Moral of the story, America only cares about freedom when it's American freedom. Everything else is self-serving. Which brings us back to Israel. The stronger Israel gets, as it effectively defends itself, as its economy grows, and as its diplomatic position improves, the more the left hates it. Uh, no. The second of the left's compasses, the race compass, is another reason the left hates Israel. Aha, so we're racist now. Go on, dickhead. Just as it substitutes weak and strong for good and evil, the left substitutes non-white and white for good and evil. The left doesn't judge people by their actions, but by their race. That's why, for example, the left asserts that a black person cannot be a racist. Only a white person can be a racist. Fun fact, Dennis Prager used to write books for children, but he didn't succeed because even kids could not believe his stupid fairy tales. So he moved on to producing shameless reactionary propaganda. Anyone can be racist, including black people. Jesse Lee Peterson is an amazing example of that. And that provides the second reason Israel is labeled evil. Israelis are considered white and Palestinians are not white. Never mind that more than half of Israel's population is not white. Also never mind that Prager is literally having a verbal diarrhea. The result? The left essentially ignores Palestinian terror and loudly condemns Israel's responses to terror. I'd like to see some sources for that. Oh wait, 
We're watching Prager U. It's bullshit o'clock. Now to the left's third compass, the class compass. Now this is a bit more appealing to my leftist soul. Go ahead, old man. This is the third way in which the left replaces traditional Western and Judeo-Christian categories of good and evil. Instead of judging people's actions by the same moral yardstick, that of good and evil, the left judges people's actions based on their economic class. Rich people and rich nations are bad, poor people and poor nations are good. Oh really? Then class traders must not be a thing. And countries like Norway and Sweden only exist in mythology. What a shameless dumb fuck. This began with Karl Marx. Of course it did. It's always either Karl Marx or Satan. Just toss a coin. Who divided the world by economic class, not moral behavior. To Marx and to Marxism, good and evil is entirely class-based. No, it's not. Good is defined as workers, evil as owners. No, roughly speaking, good is fair pay and evil is exploitation. And that is the third reason for the left's hatred of Israel and of America. They are both wealthy. Sure. Also, fuck Germany. Let's nuke them. You shouldn't have told me about your free dental care, Leonard. Fucking die. As fewer and fewer people perceive the world in terms of good and evil, substituting a power, race, or class compass for a moral compass, you will inevitably get more evil and more hatred of the good, beginning with Israel and America and ending with Western civilization. Good thing all of that is happening exclusively inside Prager's head. But I have to admit, this fucked up Strowman has created almost makes me worried about these mythical leftists. I mean, I can't prove they don't exist, right? There's always a chance they'll bite my legs off in my sleep. I'm Dennis Prager. To summarize this video, bro, the left hates Israel, but Israel is like awesome, bro. So fuck leftists, bro. And while I can mostly agree that Israel is a successful country, the first premise is the biggest weak spot. Prager just kept making wild assertions about the left without even a minimal effort to substantiate them. Now, to be fair and balanced, let's look at the sources they've listed on their website. Most of them just praise Israel, and the only one with the word left in it links back to the video. They are proving the video with the same video. Honestly, I expected no less. I'd like to end this response on a serious note. While this kind of propaganda might seem ridiculous to us, tens of millions of people are convinced it's true and may never realize they've been deceived. Truth is extremely important and you know it. It helps us direct our effort and time towards things that would improve our lives instead of making them worse. Please make sure you're spreading the truth whenever you can. Thank you. If you like my videos, consider subscribing. The bigger my platform gets, the more people I will be able to reach. See ya.